Hello, Wanda here, the Foiling Rock Lady. Welcome back for the next part of the three-part tutorial that was supposed to be a two-part. Sorry I got started here. I thought I had it recorded and I didn't, so we were not recording. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't get too far into it, thank goodness. Uh, so, the hand lettering I downloaded from awesomealice.com. I took my reference from this sheet. There's lots and lots of different fonts, oops, sorry, on there that you can, you know, look at and see what you like. Anyways, you can go there, awesomealice.com, and sign up for their newsletter, I believe. Anyways, they get you access to some different hand lettering. This is what we're working on today. Let me put this here if you need to pause. I might need to lift that up. If you need to pause, get a screenshot come on phone <laughs> okay hopefully that was enough time all right the Arteza mica powders is what we'll be doing our brass on our heart here with the red off-brand from Amazon will be the inner workings of the locket. I'll be using some transparent faceted nail foils on black wings. Really pretty. I'll be using this sponge to help me keep my rock uh, anchored so that the glue doesn't drip down the, the sides. The glue is Nail Art Foil Glue by SXZ. I'll be using the Beatles 84 watt large uh, UV LED lamp to cure Mr. Resin at the end when we're done. I used a mechanical pencil to do the hand lettering key to my heart and I'll be using an eraser to erase the bits I don't need. Posca 1MR to do the lining and the hand lettering. Scissors to cut the foil. I have some different tools over here. Fluffy brush to dust off the mica powder that we're that will be left on the rock. Silicone tool, nail tool to apply the powder to the glue. Um, disposable eyeliner brush to apply the glue to the rock. A regular paint brush, small. And a eyeshadow application brush to also blend the powder onto the glue. I may or may not use this dotting tool, the liner brush and Apple Barrel Jet Black, possibly. Also possibly Treasure Gold 3081E. If I didn't say it, I'm gonna be using the 12 volt LED UV light to do spot curing here on this rock. All right, let me get back to it. So I was doing the hand lettering, lining, uh, filling it in and I realized I had left the notifications on. So I tried to turn them off and saw that I wasn't recording. So it was a good thing. Whoever texted me, thank you. So basically it's uh, thick down, thin up is the basic rules to hand lettering or calligraphy. I may have to go grab a different pen. My Posca is not running very smoothly. Pretty okay. 
I'm grabbing a different pen. Just a moment. Always good to have one on hand. They come in packs of three on Amazon or bigger, but it's quite the value when you buy them in the bigger packs. So what my plans are, and hopefully all goes to plan, is to do the wings in black and then uh, use the foil and some red to do accents. Okay, now that that's dry, I'm going to go ahead, whoops. Okay, I was saying, now that that's dry, I'm going to use the eraser and take off the smudged pencil. And I have a brush here to dust it off. And if you get any on your desk, just dust that away too. But you don't want that hanging around on your rock while you're working with your paint and glue. So what I'm going to do is there's these little bits under the feathers and the wings. This, I'm going to do those with sort of a, you know, this pen does not have a color or a number. It's a Thule art pen. So I have no idea what color this is, but it's sort of a red brown bricky color. So I'm just kind of going like the under fluffy feathers, I guess. And I have the uh, the reference photo here so I can really see what I'm doing because these lines aren't very dark, which is good because we don't really want to see them through the, the work we're doing. But I'll show you here. For the mount. So these lines here, the fluffy parts under the feathers, I'm going to be doing those with this color and then the rest will be black. If you hear my son giggling, he's playing again. <laughs> that contagious laughter. Let's see here. So you basically want to go around your wings and you don't have to separate the colors like this. You could do all black, but I think it's going to be pretty because we're going to foil on top of this to give it that feathery, you know, angel wing. 
I don't know, diamond wing look. So I'm going to go down and do the under parts of my wings. And then I'm going to go back with the black liner. Okay, check in. You should be looking about like this so far. Keep keep working on the under parts, under parts of the wing. Okay, bricky red under feathers done. And now I'm going to do the black lines here. There's a feather here. And then you can put the black lines in your previous, you can put your previous lines back in. Yeah. And we are going to paint these in black so you don't have to worry about the inner parts being all perfect. Just watch your outer lines. And so we don't lose our definition. I'm not filling them in just yet so we know what part is what. But the lines are important for the process. So we must line. I'm going to line both sides. Because it's basically two different feathers. One's laying on top of the other. if that makes sense. I will have this traceable available um, online on Facebook at rockinourart.com. I'll attach it to the email, I mean the post that I make with this link. So the traceable will be there. I'll have to fill that part in. And there will be touching up if you know me. And there's a top feather. Let's see here. This is two feathers. So there's one here. one here actually go down a bit like so
this feather comes off like this. Kind of like a puzzle, but fun. I know. I don't enjoy puzzles too much. You know, the kind, the board puzzles. I get, I get caught up on them. <laughs> I can't put them up. And then they become a stress. Okay, so I am going to finish lining both sides and then we'll start, uh, I'm gonna line the black on both of the wings and then I'll start down here so you can see that. Okay, check in, half done. Black underside, then the black liner. These are also gonna be black, but I'm gonna leave them and do the glue separation so we can see the separate parts. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and I'll check back in at the same spot. Okay, still filling in the wings, the black top feathers. And leaving the brick red bottom feathers Straightening up some of the black, which we'll have to fill back in some of the red too, so. Hmm. Top, bottom, oh, I see. We'll make this a longer one. We'll make the top black. And the bottom. And I'll touch this up in a minute. Okay.
I'm trying to separate this into two feathers. And I think I may have to shorten them. What is that? Top or bottom? I see. <clears throat> Did you see? <laughs> Gotta let that dry for a minute. Okay, let's move on to something else. Start lining around down here. And there's a piece here. I'm coloring this in just the one side so we can still see the definition when we put the glue on and then I'll color the other side after the first section so here we've got some scroll work and it comes down around Okay, so go ahead and keep lining and get your scroll work down. And then we'll start in with the foils, which is tons of fun. Okay, hello there, back. <laughs> so, guess what? It's glue time. That means we're going to have some fun. Let's see. Chocolate brown, Arteza, mica powder, noir, and brilliant silver. 
I think. I may or may not use that one. So what I want to do is start in the wings and I got to do a little section at a time. So I'm going to color these two spots. And I pour some glue off into my dish here. My well, my paint well. Oh. Not time to order some glue. Okay, your disposable eyeliner brush. And make sure you have your light plugged in, ready to go, or your flashlight charged or batteries in it, ready to go. Right, we're going to start in the middle and then pull out to make that teardrop shape and then pull down for that little section. Make sure you don't put the light on your bowl with your glue in it. So point the light away from that, block it with your hand or move your bowl out of the way. So we got to go through and do each of these pieces separately to get that definition like we did on the key. When you're painting in the sections in between, make sure your glue is dry. I ruined a pen by touching wet glue. So let that part dry and we'll go over here and do these. <laughs> I gotta find the glue. There it is. Okay. And come back to this side. Remember, start in the center. And this is a long piece. You'll have to refer back to your drawing or your traceable to make sure you do the right spots of your scroll work. The idea is you want that definition, so be sure to leave spaces between it. Do that. That's how we get the definition when we put the mica powder on. Like in the top of that. And I'm only doing these first three parts here with this. I guess it would help if I finished painting, huh? because these are actually feathers. So I'm gonna do this with a pearl white, which No, I'm not, I'm gonna use foil. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, color that in. Okay, the foil I'm going to start with on the smaller feathers is the, I call it crushed glass, the small crushed glass looking foil. I'm just going to cut off a little piece. And apply that there. There. want to make sure it's totally cured. Pretty feathers. See that? <laughs> and now you know why I'm addicted to foils. <laughs> because it's magic. <laughs> okay, next piece. The big fluffy parts here. Cure that. Okay, for this bigger section, I'm going to use the larger crushed glass. Smaller, larger. So you want to work your way around your wings doing different types of foils so that you get the separation. So on the black, I'm going to use the large crushed, okay? And then on the red, I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use the stripey right here, yeah, on the red part. I will show you an example. And don't worry about losing your lines because absolutely positively you'll have to do some touch ups. So you can do two or three or four or however many you're comfortable with at a time or one. One at a time is always, always the best way to start if you're not um, familiar with foiling yet. So I'm going to do three. I'm going to use my light. My Mac Art 6 watt mini LED to cure that larger section and get my foil ready.
Okay. So I'm going to do them separately because I want the direction of the foil to be going a certain way. Oh, this is the one that's in the... Okay, these foils, <laughs> if you take your gloves and pull them along the foil, the side that has the drag is the side that goes on the rock. These are really hard to tell which side goes on the rock. Anyways, try that again. They should just come off very easily. So if they're not coming off easy, you got the wrong side down. Looking good. All right, so go through and do your separate feathers. Um, and then I'll meet you back down here for the actual mica powder. Scroll work. Okay, quick check in. Your wings should be looking something like this. And then you can go and put back in your fine lines. Just find your line and pop it back in there. And if you have to draw it again, make it a little bigger, that's totally fine too, because glue likes to travel. So. I'm sorry. Pop those lines back in there. Okay, now your lines are back and they're good. Go ahead and do the other side of your wing. Isn't that beautiful, guys? <laughs> I love foil. You love foil. Okay, foiling is done. Now time for the mica powder. So we're going to do little pieces at a time so we can get the separation. If you want to make a point, start in the middle and pull out to the tip. And then come back down.
Okay, let's start with this. And on your Arteza powders, you want to give it a shake. And then open it, move the powder out of the way, and just use the lid with this piece in the lid. If you can get it back in there. Hmm. Of course, the one time they stick down, they never do. <laughs> Too funny. I wonder if it's the temperature in my house. Weird. Okay, so basically we're just going to mix the colors like we did yesterday. Just put a little of the noir. And then some of the chocolate brown. And then rub. Make sure you got your brush handy, your fluffy duster brush. Now, also, if you don't have the silicone tool, you can use the eyeshadow applicator wands, and they work just fine. brush away from the wings just in case there's any sticky spots on the wings you don't want to to have chrome powder on your wings with your foil <laughs> okay well this bit's drying i'm going to paint in here And in here. You gotta paint your lines back to find your other scroll. <laughs> it's kind of a challenge, but worth it.
Okay. And this piece next. Okay, so you've got the idea, and if you did part one of this tutorial, you'll know how to find your scrolls in there. Okay, inside of the lock is going to stay black with no chrome powder, and then the background, if you can see here, I'll make a little mark with this red pen. like in here. You know what, I'll just go ahead and paint it with this so you can see the part that I'm going to use the red on. Okay, so this is not gonna be a good paint job, I'm just giving you parameters. Okay, so those areas are going to go with this color red. And then the black and the white that's left will be this chrome scroll work. But I'm going to do the black first and then paint the white black and then do it. Okay, scroll work is done. Looking pretty cool. So now, I think all we have left is just this red background, and it's very little bit. So be very careful with your glue, and then you won't have too much touch-up. But it is probably going to be difficult, because I'm having a hard time. So go slow is the best advice. And do one little section at a time. I will show you here what my plan is. This is messy, so careful opening up your flat one. <laughs> okay. Isn't it beautiful though? Oh, I love chrome powder. Okay, very, very carefully clean off your silicone brush. Pick up just a tad with the corner. Pop it on your glue. And quickly brush away in that in that pretty and then you can rub it with your glove 
to chrome it out. Or with your silicone tool. Okay, so you're gonna do all the little background spots, which isn't too many, so. Okay, when you're done, you're going to want to touch up just a bit your lines. Kind of hard to write on because it's slippery. <laughs> Fun, fun. Okay, so I relined this half. Go ahead and finish your lining. Okay, in the middle of your block here, make a little bit of a white or a kind of a light spot. Just kind of a messy shadow in there. Like so. Make sure all the dust is off of your rock. One last polish. The more you rub the chrome powder, the more polished they get. Pretty, huh? Okay, then we're gonna do a coat of Mr. Resin and do it three cycles at 120 seconds. This is an 84 watt Beatles light. Okay, this is UV resin. Do not rub it all the way around, just the top and the sides. And then when that's all finished curing, then you can do your back. If you notice, I have some sponges here. It's to lift up the rock inside the machine so that it can get the sides cured too. The lights go all the way down, but for some reason, it doesn't like to cure the sides, so. Don't rub too, too much because it makes bubbles in your <laughs> resin. So. Okay. 
try to, if you see bubbles, try to, don't use your torch. This is flammable. Okay. When I say torch, don't use fire to get bubbles out of UV resin. Bad idea. Okay, take off your gloves so you don't ruin your machine. <laughs> Sticky glue everywhere. Bring your machine over the top of your rock. Let it go three cycles at 120 seconds, and then we're done. I'll be right back to show you the finished rock. Okay, we're finished. Now we have our series done. The key to my heart with locket winged locket thank you for joining me for this very long three-part tutorial uh, if you liked what you saw here today please subscribe and hit like and the notifications button so you will know when I upload more new content also join us at rockin our art at on Facebook uh, for weekly tutorials and also some other cool uh, content for free um, tutorials and tips and tricks on paint and rocks. Thank you again. This is the Foiling Rock Lady. See you next time.